Hello and welcome. My name is Peace Mitchell and I am co-founder of Women Changing the World Press. Before we begin, I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land that I live and work on, the people of Mamu country in North Queensland. I'd also like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional owners and elders past and present right across Australia and the Torres Strait. Today, I'm so excited to be launching our new book, Purpose and Passion. And I'm very honored to have one of my fellow co-authors join me today, Sarah Barnbrook, to talk about her chapter. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thank you. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here, Sarah. Before we begin, I'd love you to tell us a bit about you and the work that you do for those who might not have met you before. Sure. Uh, so my name is Sarah and I am a business owner of a retail business for games called Board Games and Battlegrounds. And I'm also the founder of a not-for-profit called Away From Keyboard. I'm a huge volunteer at a state level with, with a women's organization in Victoria called the CWA. Um, and yeah, I spend a lot of my time um, giving back to the community. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, your chapter was called Words Without Action Are Only Noise. Can you tell us a bit about your chapter? Sure. So I really wanted to focus on um, that when we have when we set intentions to do something that we really have to follow through with those intentions and that it's the action that actually makes it the, you know worthwhile. And that's where you find your purpose is actually in the action. And sometimes the the outcomes that we traditionally think are a measure of success are not necessarily what actual success is. Success is in the effort that we expend on these things. And we should really be celebrating all of the effort we put into things. Um, and, you know, I go through different areas, um, and different focuses throughout my chapter to sort of highlight what I mean by that. But really, it's about not just saying you're going to do something, it's actually the, the action of doing it. Yeah, amazing. So there's a quote in your chapter, you say, I strongly believe in miracles, especially those against all odds. Can you tell us about this challenging time in your life and how you got through it? So that particular quote was related to uh, my partner at the time. Um, I was really pregnant. I cover this in, this in my chapter briefly, but I was really pregnant and he had a medical accident and ended up um, in a coma when my daughter was born and he nearly died and was actually um, became um, incomplete quadriplegia from it and it was a very difficult period of time with a newborn I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old um, and sometimes it just felt like I was being swallowed alive by my life and my circumstances and you just have this outpouring of love and support initially when you have sort of that sort of family trauma but it's that long suffering that sort of internal grit that you have to sort of find. Um, for him, he was able to, um, you know, he's, it's a miracle that he's alive and, you know, he has last rights provided to him. Like he had all forms of life support. Um, and for him, yeah, he um, definitely called in a few miracles to still be on earth. So, uh, but it, in, in his journey as well, like he also has, um, lives, you know, he lives as an incomplete quad still. It's not, you don't recover from that. He still is that. Um, but he's still trying to find his own purpose um, and why is he still here and all of those things, which spills out still onto our family and how we are all able to support each other still. But I think that, you know, those sort of miracles happen to all of us all the time. And it's just being able to understand and, and to feel them. Um, and I think to honor them. And, uh, you know, through my chapter, I talk about sort of that self-compassion that, you know, giving yourself credit and not expecting the world and, there's times in your life when you are far more, you know, settled and you're capable and you have that momentum. And there's other times when we're restoring ourselves and we're resting and it's giving yourself grace. So often in life, we are so, that inner critic is so negative. And often in those times when I was really overwhelmed, it was that really practicing inner self, um, uh, that talk. Every time I heard myself get really negative, I would stop and try to be, really kind what would i say to my child what would i tell my four-year-old right now i don't need to be so negative or hard on myself the dishes yeah. will wait <laughs> yeah <laughs> such a it just seems like that must have been such a hard time you had two mm -hmm. young children a newborn baby and your husband literally fighting for his life 
um, yes, it was difficult. I mean, the my the family that we had, the support from our family and friends, was you know really monumental for us to survive that. So it does take that sort of village. Um, to be able to overcome things like that. And in, um, my family and my extended family are overseas, so I don't have that sort of focus here, but I've definitely become, you know, his family or my family now too. So, you know, it's good to have sisters um, here as well as overseas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a number of things that you talked about in your chapter, and one of those is the importance of embracing curiosity. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, I just think it's really important to, I personally, I'm always curious. I think I annoy people because I ask so many questions, but it's because of that curiosity. I'm just really passionate about knowing about, tell me more about that or get, you know, it's actually helped me be um, able to connect with other people. Uh, I'm also, I think in my chapter, I speak about, you know, vulnerability and connecting through vulnerability, but that's also usually through curiosity is that you're really trying to hone in on, a specific topic or something that resonates with you and them and you often find that we are very similar or there's very few things that actually set us apart um, and it's those sort of things that become very interesting to me what you know they may do something differently or their perspective may be very different and often it's those differences that um, actually make us shine yeah absolutely so you talk about as well in your chapter giving back, and I know that this is a, a big part of your life. Um, you talk about nurturing compassion and connection. Can you tell us more about why giving back has been so important to you? So when I was going through the difficulty um, with supporting Shane in hospital when he first came home, I found I was sort of drowning in myself as, you know, the mother and a carer um, mm -hmm. and a wife that I really needed just to be Sarah and me looking for opportunities to give back and to serve other people really helped me um, and enriched my my own spirit to be able to help in that way and to sort of um, put aside my own issues, put aside whatever I was struggling with to be able to go and help somebody else actually made me feel better. It actually helped me to be able to feel like I had purpose and I wasn't getting swallowed alive by my life. And I think there's periods of everyone's life where we go through those ups and downs. And when I was at my down, like my deepest, darkest, is it was really through volunteering and service that helped me the most to be able to come through that. And then to be able to connect with other people still and to resonate with them still through I find nothing but strength and vulnerability and authenticity. And I think that the more we can just, you know, cut through the curated, you know, perfection and just be real with mm -hmm. each other, the, the more um, we're, we have those stronger and unique connections that are more powerful and meaningful. Yeah, that's amazing. What are some of the organizations that you've volunteered with? So I'm um, with the Country Women's Association of Victoria. I'm currently their deputy state president. And I've also, with the United um, Nations of Australia Association, the Victoria branch, I've done other things like local school council, um, Relay for Life, uh, Little Athletics. It just sort of depends. But it wasn't until I found um, CWA, which I cover in my bio, but in CWA is where I actually found like the like-minded people that I really um, resonate with. I'm also part of the Associated Country Women of the World, and I'm currently at their conference. That's why I'm, I'm in a hotel room at the moment, but we just had our triennial um, regional conference. Amazing. So, where, where, where is that happening? Um, this year, it's actually in Griffith, New South Wales, but sometimes we go all over. But this year, and I had two resolutions that came here, which was I was very proud to pass, which they were carried unanimously, which is exciting. So I'll go to World Conference in Canada in 2026. Amazing, amazing. Oh, that's exciting. So in your chapter, you also talk about the importance of practicing self-compassion and self-care. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, I think we're just so hard on ourselves and so many of the, the struggles that we face are in the comparison of who we are to other people and not allowing ourselves to um, to have that grace internally, to, to, to know that we can take that moment to reflect on ourselves and to not put the world's expectations on us. Um, I read a quote recently about, um, you know, 
I'm with the current version of myself and I'm going to sit with her for a while. And it's okay to be where we are in the moment and, and to know that we not all, not all flowers bloom all year. You know, there are times when we need to restore and it's really important for our growth. And I have found my most strength has come um, from those dark periods when I really thought, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And it really was. And, and in particular, some of those days were hour to hour because life was so um, delicate. Um, and to come out the other side now and to know that I can still help support other people and connect with them um, through my own experiences. And, you know, that's just really a drop in the bucket compared to everything I've gone through uh, in my own life. But I'm sure finding like-minded people that are have that same sort of level of empathy um, is really important, which is something I have found also with your organization. So it's been great. Oh, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Sarah. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. And thank you for your chapter in Purpose and Passion. I really enjoyed reading it. There was so much um, wisdom and um, lessons shared in there. Really thank enjoyed you so that. much. And thank you to everybody who's joined us today. If you haven't got your copy of our book yet, you can buy Purpose and Passion at wcwpress.com. That's all for now. Thank you so much. And we will see you all again soon. Bye.